Yes. Lieutenant? The captain wants to see you on the bridge immediately. Returning to course. Wake up! Running on both captain diesels. Captain wants to see you. Making... One, four. Knots in this weather. Come on. What's going on? What do you mean? Something wrong? It's just... We got lots of officers only messages. Something's going on. Captain's keeping it to himself for now. I smell war coming. Hurry up, the cap says it's urgent. Now wait, the old man wants to see you alone. Yeah, I'm trying to work here. Quiet, please. I haven't seen a night this quiet in a long time. Such stillness. Such peace. As if the troubles of the world don't make waves out here. And yet it's just a quiet before the storm. We are at war number one. The invasion of Poland has begun. It appears that our Führer gets to rewrite history after all. And we are caught right in the middle of it. Hey! Ship ahead! Two o'clock! Westbound! And so it begins. Sound the alarm! All men to action stations. Let the hunting commence. Come on, come on, come on! Go! Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Silent Hunter 5 in the opening minutes of combat during the invasion of Poland and the start of World War II. Officially, the Kriegsmarine fired its first shots in anger at 4.45am on September 1st, 1939, when German pre-dreadnought battleships began engaging Polish military transports. We begin our campaign a minute later at 4.46am as the first officer of a Kriegsmarine Type 7 U-boat in what will be the first torpedo of the Tonnage War. So, Silent Hunter 5 is a World War II U-boat simulator. It's a long-running series with some really great titles. The most popular being Silent Hunter 3, which is still considered the definitive U-boat simulator. Silent Hunter 4 continued this, but took it to the Pacific Theater, where you took on the role of an American submarine captain engaging the Japanese in the Pacific Theater. Silent Hunter 5 was first released in 2010 and brought us back to the Atlantic campaign. However, with a few changes, in the previous Silent Hunter games you had access to multiple submarines and would progress your way up to more advanced designs during the campaign. In Silent Hunter 5 you only have access to the Germans' main Type 7 boat, although you can make modifications to it. It's picked up a few RPG elements along the way as well. These RPG elements include a crew that remains static with your Type 7 U-boat as you progress through the campaign and the U-boat itself being fully modelled, allowing you to walk around in it all the way from the engine room to the torpedo room, speaking to various crew members and getting little tidbits of information from the various crew members who all have vastly different backgrounds and come from different places within Germany, each having their own differing opinions on the war itself. This unique and different setup for the U-boat, as well as the extremely impressive graphics of the time, and even quite good graphics by today's standards, set Silent Hunter 5 up to be the ultimate U-boat sim. Unfortunately, it was also an Ubisoft product. The game was rushed out to market half-finished with a multitude of bugs, most of them game-breaking, requiring multiple patches to be released in order to simply get the game stable and playable. It was incredibly poorly optimised, requiring well above standard hardware at the time to get it running at any decent form of frame rate. And worst of all, for those who could actually get the game running correctly and at a decent frame rate, 
Half speed ahead. The lack of intelligence of the AI and extremely poor mission design led to a rather lacklustre experience, which is why Silent Hunter 3 is still considered the definitive U-boat simulator. Bearing six, eight. These are some of my favourite shots from the Silent Hunter games, by the way. One of the common descriptions given by survivors of torpedo attacks during World War II, after you get past the initial destruction and terror of the torpedo attack itself, was the eerie sight from the life rafts or from those clinging to whatever they could find to stay afloat, of German U-boats silently cutting their way through the waves, just observing what they've done before sinking back under the waters. So anyways, if Silent Hunter 5 was so poorly received and so poorly done by Ubisoft, why am I playing this one and not Silent Hunter 3? Well, one, it's obviously the most attractive of the Silent Hunter games, but more importantly, there are mods that fix it. We're running this campaign with the Wolves of Steel Mega Mod from subsim.com. We are running a slight change to it, however. I have all of the mod components installed, however, I am not using the historical navigation portion of the mod. It's the one part I don't have installed on. While it is very accurate, I find it very fiddly, so I'm sticking with the standard navigation tools given by Silent Hunter 5, but all other sections of the gameplay have been modified by the mod. Uh, interestingly, even though I'm using the navigation tools from Silent Hunter 5, I still do get access to the correct Kriegsmarine maps, along with their historical markings, and all of the appropriate tools that would come with the navigation mod. I just don't have to use them if I don't need to. So at this point, we have just put our first merchant ship underwater, or at least it's in the process of sinking. You'll be surprised at how long it takes a ship to sink, even one that's been completely split in half. If it's sealed up well enough, it can take hours for them fully to go underwater. That said, we do have a potential contact to the south. It's quite a ways off, so we're beginning our turn in that direction and making best speed to that potential contact. We have a very limited window available to us here. While Polish naval vessels will be out in the Baltic Sea guarding the northern coastlines of Poland itself, not all ships will be deployed at this time, and the Polish Navy will be recovering from the sudden attacks from Germany. This short window immediately following the commencement of the invasion on Poland gave the Kriegsmarine and the U-Boat Corps in particular a very limited window to engage merchant shipping without having to worry about Polish naval vessels, most of which that had been tasked to engage the Kriegsmarine surface fleet. And more than that, in the immediate confusion following the invasion, not all merchant traffic was notified that they were now sailing in an active war zone. Five thirty-four a.m. with the minutes ticking away towards sunrise, and we've managed to locate another ship. It's a large Polish merchant vessel. The flag is the giveaway, and it's currently heading west. Thankfully, at this point, we still have the cover of darkness as our ally, so we have not been detected by this particular ship just yet, despite being relatively close. The plan here is to submerge the U-boat, just to make sure we're not detected, but keep the periscope elevated and locked on the target, so we have visual acquisition of the target at all times. We will, however, be running at near flank speeds while we're submerged. This is quite safe, as it's highly unlikely that a cargo ship or a transport or merchant vessel is going to have acoustic detection equipment, so they will not be able to hear us, and our maximum submerged speed is faster than their current cruising speed. Once we're at or close to around 90 degrees off their starboard side, I will turn the U-boat in to point directly towards their hull, maximising the merchant vessel's profile and giving us the best, biggest target to potentially hit with a torpedo, and we'll begin the engagement. But first things first, time to submerge the boat. Just raising the periscope now as we're beginning the dive so I can make sure we have visual contact of the ship at all times without any worry about losing it. Extreme speed ahead. Engage electric motors. Speed 
Slow speed ahead. Minimum speed ahead. So, having finally caught our target, we begin to close in for the kill. However, I did slightly mistime my turn in, and this has left me more to the rear Starting of the target two. than I would have liked to have been. Two. Two. I'm aiming at shots at around 20 to 30 degrees at this point with tubes 1 and 2. Two. One torpedo is configured for high speed, one for slow speed, and the torpedoes are set to take their bearing directly from the direction that the periscope is pointing in. This is mainly for simplicity's sake. I can manually configure the torpedoes, but that is generally best for engaging multiple targets in a single volley and for situations where you may not be able to keep the periscope up and on target, such as situations where you're engaging a military vessel. And it was also at this point that I realised exactly how rusty a shot that I've gotten. Both torpedoes are going to miss by a substantial margin. And even worse than that, I'm actually going to give up the game by firing them. While the first torpedo managed to slide past the target almost undetected, the second torpedo was spotted. And with the Wolves of Steel mod making the AI substantially less brain dead, the target is now beginning zigzags, although I don't realise it at this time. Closing tube, four. Flooding tube, four. Two, three, close. And almost as soon as Torpedo 3 left, I knew it wasn't going to hit the target. It was at this point that I realised he was starting to zigzag, so immediately switched to Torpedo 4. Torpedo 4 is set for medium speed, and since the target is already in the middle of a big turn over to its port side, we're going to aim this one directly at the rear of the ship. It shouldn't be able to turn hard enough to actually avoid this torpedo, and since it's already manoeuvring and we're now stuck in the rear, that torpedo should slam straight into the rudder assembly and the engines, possibly igniting the engine room, definitely disabling the ship. I'll stop. Right up the tailpipe. That has definitely blown the rudder assembly and destroyed the engines. The ship right now is coasting. It's no longer going to be able to maneuver. Unfortunately, while such hits do have a fairly good chance of sinking the ship that's been hit, it's not a guarantee. The engine rooms can be sealed up fairly tightly. They're designed to be able to be sealed off in the case of an explosion to prevent the ship sinking. And more than that, that explosion wouldn't have affected the cargo that it was transporting in any way, shape, or form. So, we need to apply more damage, and unfortunately, because I'm using a more realistic mod, I have realistic torpedo reload times. The four torpedoes won't be ready to fire again for several minutes. I wasted way too many shots here for a single ship. However, the aft torpedo is still loaded, but it will require me to turn the ship around in order to be able to fire it. But before it comes to that, let's go for a direct engagement. We after all have this wonderful 88mm deck gun. The 8.8cm SKC-35 naval gun was the standard weapon equipped to the front of all German U-boats at the start of World War II, and it was quite successful. Against unarmed targets, it was not uncommon to hear stories of German U-boats surfacing and just directly engaging the hull of the enemy ships, punching holes just below the waterline and letting them sink, saving the usage of torpedoes. This was especially true against small merchant vessels, stuff that only had a very small crew and a very small tonnage overall. However, its time in the sun was relatively limited. By mid-war, the merchant vessels had been upgraded with a large number of 30 and 50 caliber defensive Torpedo guns, missed, and the 88 was unshielded. This left the gunnery crews extremely vulnerable to defensive fire from even the smallest Machine merchant stuff. vessels, and with the gun rendered ineffective for combat purposes and only causing drag slowing down the U-boat's potential top speed underwater, many captains opted to have it removed. In this situation, the 88 actually did some reasonably good damage considering the size of the ship that we're attacking. Unfortunately, it was going, never going to be anywhere near enough, so I fire off a few more rounds here before ordering the U-boat into a turn to place our target directly to our submarine's rear. So, first things first, we need to assess the damage that we've already done to see whether or not firing the last torpedo that we have available in the tubes is actually necessary. So quickly jumping up on the high portion of the deck so we have the maximum view and taking a look, it looks like the rear of the ship is down a little, but the front of the ship is riding slightly high, but it doesn't look like it's sinking anymore. So, 
order a course change just to make sure the rear of the submarine is pointing directly at the target because at the very least the target is now completely immobile there was an explosion earlier on i suspect that torpedo was missed, possibly sir. the engine room blowing and that's the last torpedo that we fired officially missed now activating the periscope gives us access to the targeting computer we don't need to raise the periscope all the way And we're going to pick a spot right in the midrift. We're going to leave it on a slow speed. We're not that far from the target, 250 to 300 meters at maximum, so we don't need a high speed shot. The ship is also completely immobile, so we don't need to worry about speed to intercept a moving target anyway. And right about here in the midsection, just behind the bridge and the quarters. Flooding to five. Listen for the tube to flood. And torpedoes away. Now at this point, quickly get out of the periscope. We don't need to be there anymore and get up on the deck. I want to see this torpedo hit myself. In on the binoculars. There's our spotlight. Now we should have been aiming right about here. Torpedo impact. Bullseye. So clearly I need to give myself a little bit more practice so I don't waste so many torpedoes to begin with, but nevertheless, that is our second target down. In terms of our torpedo load, we should have access to three additional torpedoes for the front and one more for the rear, so we have four more torpedoes available to fire. And in a little over an hour since the beginning of the war, we've managed to sink two merchant ships for a total tonnage of 10,885 tonnes. So my next objective is to continue south and see whether or not we can find some merchant traffic around the ports in northern Poland. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below and don't forget to click that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more and you haven't already. And until next time, run deep and run silent.